there's a debate simmering again at the FCC, one that will sound very familiar to folks in this audience. Administrations change, geeky tech words get thrown around, and the results of these debates can have a profound impact on just about everyone involved in a 21st century economy. We're once again reconsidering the country's stance on net neutrality. To help follow this conversation, we wanted to rewind a bit and cover some of the basics. In classifying the internet, you're going to hear about information services and telecommunication services. So we should probably explain what those are. And no matter how politicians define internet, we hope you'll still keep up with all the work here on reviews.org. Hit those subscribe options down below, follow us around the socials, check out our home site, reviews.org. We've got some great content and fun contests to check out. What is the internet? Well, you're watching this on the internet, so you probably have a solid idea of what it is, but, but we mean legally the definition that matters to a government from the perspective of regulating that thing. Since the invention of sending data between computers, we've been in a debate about how this network should be legally defined. As we consider more complicated regulatory actions like net neutrality, that conversation is difficult to follow if we don't understand the legal definitions being used. We've had a framework of policy in place since the Communications Act of 1934. This created federal, nationwide oversight of telephones, telegraphs, and radio. This act created the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, to oversee these technologies, and the act has been updated over time as new technologies have been invented. One of the most significant updates happened with the Telecommunications Act of 1996, but numerous other bills over time have amended and changed the original Communications Act of 1934. Getting into the early 2000s, there was a growing interest in how to classify the internet. In the United States, we divide information services and telecommunication services for the purposes of regulation. You'll also hear the phrases Title I and Title II as to how those regulations might affect companies and citizens. Very generally speaking, Title II classification refers to a service so important that it should be considered a utility like telephone lines. And as it's a more important service, it's subject to stricter regulations. So we've drawn that services line in the sand legally what is an information service? Legally, an information service is defined as the offering of a capability for generating, acquiring, storing, transforming, processing, retrieving, utilizing, or making available information via telecommunications and includes electronic publishing, but does not include any use of any such capability for the management, control, or operation of a telecommunications system or the management of a telecommunications service. Okay, an information service sends and stores information on a telecommunications network, but is not a part of managing or operating a telecommunications service. Then we should probably ask, what is a telecommunications service? Legally, that's defined as the transmission between or among points specified by the user of information of the user's choosing without change in the form or content of the information as sent and received, and the offering of telecommunications for a fee directly to the public or to such classes of users as to be effectively available directly to the public regardless of the facilities used. A telecommunication service is how we send and receive information. I personally think it's pretty easy to look at the internet and the services we use on the internet and divide those up along the legal definitions that we just read. YouTube exists on the internet. You can watch content or you can submit content to YouTube, but YouTube is not the internet. You use the infrastructure of the internet to interact with YouTube. So why was the internet ever considered an information service? 
The early days of online access were heavily dependent on phone service. The telephone was a utility, a telecommunication service, and we used those telephone lines to send information online. Over time, that's changed significantly, where today basically everything is data. Your home phone, if you still have one, probably operates on data through your ISP. Phone is probably one of the least used apps on your handy pocket computer. The internet has become a vital backbone service to life in the 21st century. Back in 2010, the FCC started seriously working towards reclassifying the internet as a telecommunication service, which eventually arrived in 2015 as a revised version of the Open Internet Order under FCC Chair Tom Wheeler. That was then reversed about about a year later under the Trump administration and FCC chair Ajit Pai. Now we're a year into the Biden administration and the FCC is still in a deadlock. No new policy can really get through the commission so long as there's a tie. Biden is looking to appoint Gigi Sohn, who was legal counsel under Tom Wheeler, and that should break the current deadlock. And one of the items on the long list of FCC initiatives is re-reclassifying the internet. When we talk about potential harms of this kind of pendulum swing in policy, we can point to numerous technologies that carriers and ISPs have had influence over or have slowed their adoption. We can show examples of discriminatory business practices and anti-competitive behavior. On this channel, we recently covered the FTC report on how much of your data your ISP tracks and profits from. If we're going to empower regulators to properly tackle those industry abuses, the legal definitions need to be accurate. So when you hear a truism like, how can we be competitive in the global economy and regulate a 21st century network with a law from the 1930s? You can be confident that that's not how this works. Laws evolve over time, they're updated, they're amended, new technologies are included and reclassified. If you hear something like that from a lawmaker, they're either really bad at making laws or they're purposely trying to confuse the conversation for reasons. Because in my not so humble opinion, someone saying the internet in its current form as a backbone structure for all communication, commerce, education, healthcare, and entertainment should be considered an information service is using a 1996 definition of phone lines to define the internet. And how are we supposed to be competitive in the global economy and regulate a 21st century network with legal definitions over a quarter century old. Sorry, couldn't help that last bit. The trickiest aspect of this conversation, it sometimes feels like you need to be a law scholar to follow the debate. Getting through those core definitions took a little bit of explaining. Even just working through the history of these decisions takes us back to laws written in the late 1920s. And we'll also be keeping an eye on the FCC appointment process and share any major updates to the commission once they start working on some new policy. At once, quite a bit of this conversation is going to sound familiar, but it should be interesting to see where the commission might lead us over the next couple years. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. Like I said, make sure you check out all the work, all of the contributors here on reviews.org. Check out the home site, check out the socials, and keep an eye out for some of those contests. We've got some really fun stuff coming. For reviews.org, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, aka Some Gadget Guy, and I will catch you all on the next video.